Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. Welcome to the Mind Your Own Podcast with Aaron Sorensen and Sasha Durkin. Where we stick to sports, except when we're not. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mind Your Own Podcast. I'm Aaron. I'm Sasha. And we are officially in year two of this podcast. Last, last week we commemorated one year, but we have officially transcended into a second year. Those of you who felt bullied by us to email us did. So we will <laughs> get to those at the end of this episode, but we do appreciate it. It's really fun to see familiar names come into our inbox, see new names come into our inbox. So yeah. Thank you for thank you for sending us notes, and we will get to that at the end of this episode. I'm going to tell you, if you're like, what's different in year two of this podcast? The one thing that certainly isn't is that we are definitely not going to stick to sports, and we're definitely <laughs> going to keep championing for women in sports. So if you came for anything else, surprise, it's still the same. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Sasha, tell me about you, because we were just talking before we hopped on this podcast, and you were saying it's a busy day. Mm. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. I just um, realized on the way into work today that it was just going to be, it's not chaos, it's just busy. It's one of those days where it's nonstop, like all day, there's something happening for every minute of my day today, (laughs) and Uh. uh, my stepson has another game tonight, so that's exciting. He started um, B team last week Still. and looked pretty legit, like not even being biased. Like I was like, my heart's pounding. Like I'm so excited for him. He looked really good. So um, he played D line and he's pretty damn quick. So hopefully that was a little bit of a confidence booster for him to uh, keep going because he has mentioned like, this is hard. We're like, we're proud of you for sticking with it because it really is difficult, um, especially if you've never played before. So yeah, congratulations, round of applause for my stepson. He's a badass. So proud of him. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm so excited. It'll be the like, we knew him when kind of like, yeah, on the A team and starting and kicking butt. That's awesome. Good for him. It's also fun for you because you get to, you know, kind of just cheer him on and be in that role of like, you know, watching somebody like work hard at something. And that's a pretty fun, I don't know. I don't have kids, but I always think it's cool to like watch people achieve things that they're working toward. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's super exciting. So, well, I mean, speaking of things that people are working toward, Sasha mentioned something to me over the weekend and I felt bad because like on game days, my brain is like mush. Mm -hmm. And I responded like way late to you, but I remember I saw it and I immediately started Googling and then I started asking Nebraska sports information department if they had any information and they really did not because what Sasha had pointed out is Nebraska had a, a woman referee, a woman official for Nebraska's matchup with Buffalo and you weren't the only one who commented on it, but like I had some people ask, like, is this the first time Nebraska's has a, had a woman official? I don't believe so. Just mm-hmm. s- side note for everyone. Um, I know that they had a woman official at Illinois. I know that's not at Memorial Stadium, but I'm pretty sure. But Sasha made a comment when she sur- saw her that like she was a part of this game and that it's so common that it's not a big deal. And I thought this was a really interesting point because we have, whenever women do something the first time, it's a big deal. Anytime a person of color does something for the first time, it's a big deal because it's the first time. Right. But you always hear consistently people say, I don't want this to be news. Yeah, It shouldn't have to be news. I hope a year from now, 10 years from now, however many years from now, like we're not having to make this a conversation. People aren't going, oh, look. And I thought your point was so interesting because, yeah, I actually like saw her, didn't even think a thing of it, like yep. not in a bad way. Like I just like it's not like I was ignoring her, but I just was like, oh, cool. OK, cool. Like here are today's officials. Breeze right by it and did not think about it again until you messaged me. But then I started getting tweets of people asking for more information about her. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of striking to me because people weren't talking about it and not because they were ignoring her. It just, it wasn't essentially news. Yeah. Well, and that's why I sent you a message. I'm like watching the game and initially like 
I had the same reaction. Like I saw her out on the field. I'm like, Oh, cool. These are the today's officiating crew. And then like, I, it, I, I don't know. I don't remember what, at what point in the game, but she handed a ball to somebody and I was like, you know what? I should send Aaron a message. So I don't forget about this, but <laughs> it's, it's awesome to me that this isn't a, it wasn't a newsworthy story. Like we've gotten to the place where this is normal. This is commonplace. And I just thought that that was so cool. Yeah. I mean, now I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at the box score to see who she was. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of one of those things where it was like, I was really excited for her. Um, I mean, I'm excited for anyone who's just living their dream and just doing their job. And I think that is the most impactful thing is just when we talk about like things being news because they always are the first time. So I think specifically of Shannon Loom, by the way, um, amazing individual. She's already off to the NBA for Nebraska. She only spent a few months at Nebraska Um, before anyone says, well, that can't be a good sign that she only was there for a few months. She has already slapped that rumor down. She loved her time at Nebraska, really appreciated Fred Hoiberg and his staff. I have had some really good uh, text exchanges with her. She's incredible. Her goal has always been to get to the NBA, but my point here is when she got the job at Nebraska, everyone was like, look at what Fred Hoiberg did. He, he hired a woman onto his staff. This is a first at Nebraska. The thing is, is like now when he goes and hires another woman onto his staff, yeah, it might still be news, but every single time it, every single time representation is representation matters because the more inclusive we become and the more the, just the more representation there is, the less news it is because it's not uncommon to see someone who looks like you in a role that traditionally wasn't meant for you almost. It, right. I mean, when you think about football, like it's it not any, just not even football, but any like sport, it feels like it's been so ma- male dominated forever. Right. And so like for women, it's like constantly breaking these glass ceilings, but eventually the glass ceilings are going to be gone and it's just going to be sky. So like, um, when that happens, we won't have to be like commenting about it every single time. Right. Actually, this brings up another good point because that made me think of Sarah Fuller. And then I think about how there is a female that plays on Aiden's team. Oh, um, yes. and she's like all over the place, uh, special team. She played D line. She was on the offensive line. And I was like, this is like, really freaking cool. Like, this is just amazing. Um, but then like thinking about, you know, the last year and all these conversations that we've had, that's why I thought it was, I wanted to point it out to you just because I'm like, I know it's not because of us, like, you know, continuing the conversation. It's not just us, but like feeling, I kind of feel proud that we may have a small part, maybe if it's just even in Nebraska of just continuing these conversations to the point that it isn't news that people are like, who is that? That's awesome. Instead of, oh, my God, why are you here? Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the most, one of the things that means the greatest to me, one of the nicest compliments is when um, young women, journalism students, or even younger high school, um, I even have followers who have, like, daughters that are in elementary school that I have met or communicated with. And, like, for them, when they look to me and go, I look at you and feel like what's possible Mm -hmm. because I always say, and that's like incredibly moving to the point where like my eyes just teared up because I like, I have a hard time sometimes when people make those comments to me, believing it. Like, it's like, I don't feel like what I'm doing is anything like wild. I just feel like I'm existing and not letting anyone like, let me go. Like, I just won't let anyone let me go in this space. I'm like, I'm stuck here. You're all going to deal with me until (laughs) I'm done. Um, But when I hear young women make that comment about me, I think about the fact that when I was growing up and we've talked about this on the podcast before, a lot of the women that I could look to to locally were not in sports. There were a couple, but I think like if, when you ask like, Aaron, who did you look to? Whose writing did you admire? It was people like Rainbow Rowell with the Omaha World Herald. When she had her columns, I would read them because for me, she came across as this strong woman who was telling these amazing stories. And I really enjoyed reading her columns and I would read them with my mom and just to see like this woman in a 
space that I didn't know where I necessarily fit. And at the time didn't know what it meant it meant for me. Rainbow was really, I think, one of the first people locally that inspired me in journalism. Mm -hmm. But I never really had a lot of women to look at in the press box. And I think now if you are a young woman getting into the world of journalism or sports, I mean, I, I think of even you and Sadie, like I think of like young women who are getting you know, wanting to work out, who are wanting to, ha- you know, have a different life, like change their lifestyle, um, be healthier, like to think that like they have Meathead Test Kitchen now, and that is made locally, like that is a podcast that is handled locally, like that is impactful, the amount of young women that are going to go now, it's possible for me, because I can see it, it's not something that like, they're recording thousands of miles away, they, they're they recording it right where I'm at, like that's pretty impactful. And so then I think like in the press box, you have, um, women who work in television. Now there's uh, a couple of women for Lincoln television stations, one in the, one that just was hired here in Omaha. I'm saying here in Omaha, like you're all just like sitting in my (laughs) front yard. Um, I mean, you might be, that'd be strange. We could do a live show at some point, probably not from my front yard, but (laughs) I like, I just think of all the different women. I mean, Nebraska has hired a woman into their media department to help with, um, you know, their game day and their radio show. I just think of all these different people now that young, young women and girls can look to and go like, this is possible for me. Yeah. And okay. Sorry, this is a tangent, but I just remembered this. I stored it away in my brain and like, it just hit me. I walked into Nebraska's press conference availability on Monday and I was looking across the room and there was this table. And I remember the reason it stood out to me is because they all looked like they could be sisters. Like I'm serious. They were like these beautiful young women all like looked like they could just be related. And they were all with Nebraska's media department. They're interns, they're student workers, and they're all interested in getting into different levels of sports sports communication, sports journalism. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm not kidding. There was like six or seven of them. And they just were, they, their bosses, like, to be honest with you, like I was like almost intimidated by this table. (laughs) I was like, my gosh, like, can I sit with you? Um, I'm, I'm like 14 years older than all of you, but like, tell me the hot goss. Like, I want to sit down. What's going on? (laughs) Um, but I was like, so moved by this table. Cause I'm like, it's not that a young man doesn't deserve to be at that table Mm -hmm. either, but I'm so used to seeing tables of young men to see an entire table of young women. I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like that is, that is, that is wild. It it was, it was something that I remember like storing away in my memory of like, I want to remember this moment and they will not realize how that impacted me. (laughs) Right. Well, and I was just going to say, as you're, as, as you're talking about that, like, I always just feel a lot of um, pride when I see another woman in the same space, Um, just because as we talked about like a billion times on this podcast, but like inclusion is important, but this is why it's important because then it's like commonplace. It, you know, as we started the podcast, it isn't news anymore, but I feel such a sense of pride seeing other women occupying the same spaces I am, even if it's not because of anything that I'm doing, but just being able to see somebody else that is like me in this occupying the same space and knowing that this is just going to be continue, you know, the trajectory of women being, you know, powerful and represented in the sports space or in journalism or in fitness or wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had a conversation briefly with Sadie the other day um, and she sent me a screen grab of something and, and she was like, you know, the thing that always bothers me about, it was a, it was a shitty comment from a man. Of course. (laughs) Um, But I was, she goes, you know, the thing that, that sucks is that sometimes, and I'm not saying all men, but sometimes men don't realize the power that we have. And I'm like, you know, what is ironic about that is I'm about to say what I'm about to say is that when we pool our voices together, and show a united front, it then becomes more and more evidence that we are powerful mm-hmm. in our space with our voices. Um, and that it, it's not just women, it's any, any minority group, any person of color, any, anything, as long as we keep these conversations happening, I feel like it 
continues to break down those walls and those barriers and allows for more things to be possible for a lot more people. Yeah. And I, I just, we, we've mentioned this so many times, but I mean, I think it bears referencing again, it, representation does not take away from anyone. Representation, in fact, adds to, I think about, um, and I, I run into this sometimes. I've sometimes I've been asked about this, and this is this is one subset of this world that is a little dangerous. When we, this is why we have to keep talking about representation because oftentimes, and I am cognizant of this with myself. I spent a number of years in Nebraska's media, media pretty much as one of the only women, and it can be like a really fun spot to a degree of like, everyone looks at you like you're the shiny like star because you're the only one. It's like, you're the token, if you will. And it's fun for like half a second until you start to realize no one else here understands when I'm upset that a press box doesn't have a restroom for women. Like, everyone else is like, oh yeah, that sucks. But nobody gets it like another woman would. Like nobody can, no one can empathize in quite the same way. And there's camaraderie in having other women with me. And so I think one of the areas where like when we continue to push for more women, more people of color in these spaces, it's also because it's not okay for any of us to get complacent with, well, we've hired this one person, so we're good. And it's not good for that one person. And like I said, I'm cognizant of this as well to be like, well, I'm the shiny gem. Um, Because people can make you, they can build you up into this like almost like bigger than life situation where it's like, you're the only one. And to be honest with you, I think about this a lot. I like, I hope (laughs) There's a point where people are like, oh, yeah, Aaron was great. Like, Aaron is great. She's still here. Um, But, like, look at this other person who has come into this space and has completely just, like, disrupted it. Like, I I am absolutely a disruptor. Like, I know that I am. But, like, I, I hope... I keep hoping that like more and more disruptors come along because like, I don't want to be the only one. I really mean that it doesn't serve me. It doesn't like any like good vibes I get from somebody feeling like I'm special by being like one of the only women is fleeting. None of that matters. If we are not building to a more sincere, inclusive and representative space, it does not matter. It's, a lot of times when people ask like, why do I continue to fight so hard to stay in this space? And it's because I, I constantly am worried about like what happens if we've pushed too many women out of this space, we've pushed too many people of color out of this space. And I, I'm like, you know what, like, we can't keep doing that. Like we have to keep fighting for people to be here. And that is something that matters to me a lot is like fighting for people to be here. And I, I hope that made sense to everyone. It's just, I think that like, I think that it gets to be dangerous sometimes with this whole world of um, male dominated where like you hire one person and that person becomes the like token representation. And it's like that person needs to be a stepping stone, but we need to keep building to bigger and more inclusive spaces because that is the only way that we will one accurately represent the people that we're covering. Mm -hmm. But two, then like also make it possible for more people and stop pushing people out because we don't have space for them. We absolutely have space for them. It's just on us if we want to make space. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Well, and and one thing that I was thinking as um, you were talking about that is just, you know, I could be I don't ever think this, but I hear it a lot. And I, you know, it's the imposter syndrome thing, but you know, I love love the imposter syndrome. You're you're a really great producer. And I'm like, I just push some buttons, but, (laughs) but you are though, when you have other people that when you continue the, um, to add representation, I think that it challenges the rest of the people that Mm -hmm. are here to be even better. Um, Mm -hmm. and I, I think that, that maybe that sometimes is why it's scary or people don't like change or inclusivity because that in some ways forces people out one out of their comfort zone in terms of having to push themselves a little harder. Yeah. You want to continue to be good at what you're doing. You need challenges. And if that challenge comes in a person who doesn't look like you, um, a person of color or a woman, I mean, I, I think that sometimes that's that's why it can be scary because it sometimes when you are comfortable 
when you are then met with challenge to make yourself be better, it pushes you out of that comfort zone. Um, and I think that that sometimes has to do with some of the pushback that you see. I don't honestly see as many comments anymore about, well, does this person belong here? Or you're just filling a quota. I don't see that as much because I don't seek it out, <laughs> probably. Um, I try yeah. not to check the comment sections. But I think that some of that has to do with like being scared of one of sca- just scared of change, but also the fact that that then comes with a different set of challenges because everybody, you know, you're bringing in a different worldview. You're bringing in a different um, set of experiences that Mm -hmm. maybe you don't understand. And I think that, I mean, that's why inclusivity matters because everyone should be continued to be challenged. Yeah. You know, and what you just said goes back to what we mentioned on last week's episode where that one young uh, woman sports journalist who was just trying to cover a game, shared an experience she had and was met by a number of people, which I did not even realize until a couple of you reached out that like who I was talking about vaguely could have actually fit the description of like a couple of different men who were talking about it. So I'm like, awesome. Love that journey for all of them. Um, but the thing that I, I got really sad when I was opening some of the replies and I, like you said, I don't go seek this out very often, but I was mostly just curious and to see people going to see people sincerely going, women don't belong in these roles. They are too sensitive. They're too this. They don't deserve it. They blah, 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 blah. They've but never played a comment th- about being too sensitive. You're being too sensitive. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, it was, it's just sad because I, I feel like that's such a misguided line of thinking. And I don't know why these individuals are so threatened by people that are unlike them in spaces that like, I don't know. I, I, I wish I could sincerely ask somebody to explain it, but you know, you just can't, it's, it would never, their explanation would absolutely not make sense to me. So I just have to, unfortunately just keep moving. And I do think, I mean, I've, been in sports for about a decade. You've been in this business a long time too. And I think I have seen it get friendlier. So I'm hopeful that in, you know, another 10, 20, 30 years, it continues to be, even better. Um, and I think just the more that people see people doing it. So the more you have someone like Doris Burke sitting at the table, um, actually not just being a sideline reporter, but actually sitting at the desk, the more people are going to go, Oh, this is second nature. I don't need to worry. I'm not even going to like, think about it. Hearing a woman's voice in a broadcast is not as some, something I'm even going to think about. So the more, the more that happens, like bless her Beth Moens who like she cannot do a game without people being like oh Beth on my television she's one of the best yeah. leave it be um but she keeps showing up and she's going yeah. to make that easier for somebody else and every single time you hear a woman's voice in a football game that isn't on the sideline or you hear a woman's voice in a basketball game that's not on the sideline or in whatever not on the sideline it's going to change yeah. perspectives like I don't know if anyone saw this. It was, uh, I can't believe they released it. Did you see ESPN's PR thing that they put out to be like, here's our college football, um, basically team for the fall. I, I didn't. Oh gosh. If Uh-oh. I can find it, if it hasn't been wiped from the internet, but nothing, nothing has gone from the oh. internet forever. Oh. So I will find it. Um, but they basically mapped out like, here's all of our different people for fall. And it was like based on like de- like the people at the desk and studio shows, people at like the like um, color analyst, like your analysts and like all like whatever. And then your sideline reporters. And it was really alarming how disproportionate it was. Like pretty much it was like it, it was very much like white men here, people of color here, women here. It was like, honestly, if I was putting that graphic together, I would have been like, first and foremost, uh, we can't share this. Right. Second, we as a company need to have a quick discussion about how we're hiring because this is alarming. And it's not that there's anything wrong with sideline reporters, by the way. Sideline reporting is a tough job. Like I have always said, when people would kind of make fun of Aaron Andrews, because one, similar to me we love fashion um but she would like you you don't realize she's like running laps around a field trying to get things done and like people would act like oh it's just a sideline reporting job no sideline reporting is tough but the thing is everywhere at one time 
I don't right. <laughs> sideline reporters, they've in fact, they've started adding sideline reporters for both sidelines. It used yeah. to just be one on a field. They would just be like, Aaron, you're in charge of everything. Now they're like, Tom Rinaldi, you're over here. Aaron Andrews, you're over here because we recognize it's really difficult to get the full story when you have one person trying to handle the entire field. Yeah. Now that's good. It's good that they've recognized that people on the sideline need more help. But at the same time, these people on the sidelines, if they so choose are talented enough to be elsewhere within the space. Like if they want to be at a desk, they they shouldn't have to. And I'm not saying that all of, like I'm guessing a good majority of them are like, I love this job. This is what I want to do. I want to be in the action. But some of them may want to be at a desk, but maybe don't have a pathway to get there. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to keep working on is making sure that we have these pathways to get people into the roles that they want to be in. They're passionate about. Right, because it's not that they're not qualified. It's just that unfortunately we just don't, always have provide the best access in it goes back to if you allow more people the opportunity it's not taking away from you because if if you get that job don't you then feel pretty damn qualified for it right right instead of just like trying to cut people out so that way you're guaranteed it no if you're the best for that job you will get it no matter who has applied for it no matter who has put their hat in the ring Absolutely. i don't understand the argument i really don't i don't either well and that's i was going to kind of illustrate that with like my career. So I just wanted to be a part of sports broadcasting in some way, shape or fashion. Didn't really care what it was. Ultimately, my favorite thing is putting together uh, sports packages, like with a stand up, you're doing a research story. My favorite project I ever did in high or in high school, <laughs> it was about high school sports, but the importance of them. But my favorite um, project I ever had in college was going out and getting those interviews and putting to, putting it together and finding the film to cover it all up and then doing the stand up and writing the script for it. Favorite project I've ever done. Ultimately, that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't see any of that here. So I was like, well, how about I do this? Instead of pigeonholing myself into TV or radio, I will take the path right down the middle so that I open up doors on either side if they are available. The first one that became available was, as people know, and Shick and Nick is back as a podcast and her not media mm-hmm. network, just in case we're unaware. Um, but and it's good. But, Listen but, to but, it. You know, I was like, I'm going to do every single thing that I need to do to get myself to where I could possibly go. I saw other women in other bigger markets being successful, maybe took a different pathway, but I took every internship. Ultimately, what I wanted to do was to be an afternoon radio show host in Omaha, Nebraska, because I hadn't seen it, Hmm. but I'd seen it other places. So I knew it was possible. I just didn't know how long it would take me to get there. And then, you know, life just led me down a different path. Not to say that I couldn't go back and continue to keep trying to do that. But then I landed in a place that allowed me to have two podcasts talking about stuff that I love. And I essentially am being a host on both of those. It just wasn't on radio airwaves, but people listen to more podcasts now anyway. But I'm just saying like knowing that it was possible because I saw it elsewhere was super important to me because I don't know that I would have kept trying or kept going forward or kept trying to be the best at what I do if I hadn't seen it other places. Mm hmm. Representation is open. If you haven't listened to the Representation Matters episode, go back and find it. That is what it's titled because we dive into why this is so important. It's it's important for everyone. It's just important. Like if you think about like when you're growing up and you see somebody who looks like you, and because of that, it's what's pot like now what's possible. It's it's just it's really hard to explain. <laughs> I would say like one of the most like meaningful moments for me where I realized like how important representation is, is when I saw two movies, there were two movies. Um, One was Wonder Woman. When I saw Wonder Woman, I was like to the point of tears at the end of it because I was like, that was the first time, like, I understand we grew up with Wonder Woman cartoons and we grew up with Wonder Woman, but like, this is the first time we saw Wonder Woman, in my opinion, as less of a sexual being because even like even in the tv series and everything else 
it was really about like they they played a lot off of the looks and the her body and yeah. i remember always being like if you went to combat in what she was wearing she would die in two seconds because there's absolutely nothing shielding her internal organs yeah um obviously with wonder woman the movie they kept tr- you know to some of the tradition of what her actual like uniform looked like but obviously gave it a very neat well like needed upgrade mm-hmm. um but it was seeing Gal Gadot in that role was like oh my gosh like this is what it had to have oh, felt like to watch Batman and yeah. Superman and like all of these people and feel like oh look at what's possible and I remember walking out of Black Panther and feeling that way for people of color and being like god that, that movie just has to just like there has to be so many young people of color in the world that are now going to look at that movie and be like I can be a superhero and like to the point that I remember like walking out of the movie theater theater, like wanting to cry because I was just like these you don't realize how meaningful and impactful it is until it's something that you have not experienced. Yep. And so for a lot of people like my fiance when he's with me watching these movies he's like why are you getting emotional and I'm like you grew up different. with people that looked like you <laughs> like you watch these movies and you felt like you could go save the world because the people on your your movie screens and your tv screens looked like you they seemed powerful they weren't sexualized it was like you walked out of those movies or those you walked away from those shows feeling like the world was yours like you could do everything i'm like that is how i feel right now watching wonder woman as like a grown adult is like i wish i had this when i was 10. Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) and that's just being able to see people occupying spaces that you also want to occupy is monumentally powerful. Like if you don't, if you can't see it, how, how do you think you can be it? Like maybe you want to do that, but you haven't seen it. And like, sometimes that feeling of not being able to see another person who looks like you occupying a space that you very, very much want to occupy is, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is discouraging Mm -hmm. because you don't know, you realize how much work is ahead of you if you really want to be there and not, it's not always as easy as just, Oh, you should just be motivated. You can just do it. That's not, it it can be very discouraging not to see someone occupying a space that you very much want to occupy. So if we continue to have these places and spaces being occupied by people that look like, or that are women or that are people of color. Like, that's why it's important. That's why we keep talking about this because if I hadn't seen it, I don't know that I would have stuck with it. Mm -hmm. I really don't. It's, uh, we could, we could go on about this forever because it's just, I think this comes up a lot because it's really, here's the thing. We said this before too, but it like, I'm going to repeat it just because you have a mother, a daughter, a wife, a girlfriend, a woman of any kind in your life does not mean you suddenly like understand things differently. You should be able to understand the importance of women in spaces without having to have that quantifier. Now I do understand a lot of men tend to see things differently. Once they have daughters, it suddenly changes perspective. I try to be mindful of not hating on that too much when So for instance, I had a conversation with Trev Alberts and we were talking about representation and he said, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was in my, my early twenties, I was playing football. I like, he was like, I didn't think about things like women's rights. I didn't think about any of them. And he was that he was not, he was, he prefaces this by like, it just was something that he was not thinking about. Mm -hmm. He had daughters and it suddenly was like, I should have been thinking about that. It like he, he said he wishes he could have realized prior to having daughters where his head needed to be because he just was so consumed with him, you know, himself and not thinking those things were a problem that it, it it was like, until he had daughters, he did not realize, oh, wow, this is something that like I should have been caring about. And I, I can appreciate the thoughtfulness of him to say, I should have cared about that sooner. And 
that's why I try to show grace when people have that. I think where I get frustrated is somebody who uses having daughters as a reason to be like, because I have daughters, I get it. Yeah. No, you don't. That's not what that means. Um, because you can still be a pretty terrible person and have daughters and have a mom and everything else. It's how you look at that when you have that realization and how you perspective. <laughs> yes. So that was, I think for me, the difference with what Trev said, which what Trev Albert said is that for him, it was the realization once he had daughters of like, you know, I should have been caring about this much sooner. Like I, I wish I would have had that perspective earlier in my life, but I'm now aware of where my faults were and I'm going to do better. I think that's where I'm like, that's when life and experience helps you adjust your way of thinking yeah. versus just going, well, I have daughters. So I get it. That's the difference is using your kids. You're just like, no, I don't need to like learn anything. Cause I have, I have this, I'm fine. Empathy so, and understanding are super important. <laughs> and that perspective also happens or changes or evolves. It, it does. And I just think the more, the more we like, Again, going back to what you said too, the more we discuss this, the more we talk about it, the more we put things in front of people and say, hey, this is this is real. Because I, I was going to talk about this a little bit more, but you know, it, we talk about Simone Biles on this podcast a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'll spend like two minutes just giving an example of this. But like having, having the understanding of what women go through mm -hmm. <laughs> in sports, because Last night, the night before we were recording this was the Met Gala. I love the Met Gala. Nobody understands the theme. It's the best part of the night is that everyone shows up and not a single person except for Rihanna understands the theme. But Simone Biles understood the theme. She showed up in this really cool, like cloud shaped dress. Now there are people who are like, oh, it's ugly. It's the Met Gala. Like it is supposed to be literal wearable art on your body. Like if you show up in like a regular dress, you have done it wrong. Mm -hmm. So she shows up in this really cool, like kind of like, silver um cloud looking thing with this like um star like black bodysuit underneath that has like stars all over it her hair is just gorgeous she shows up and i'm just like enthralled mm -hmm. like absolutely enthralled by her and sky thankfully one of our uh, listeners and a friend of the pod <laughs> he sent me this tweet and was like I thought he was just sending me a photo of her. And I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. I love her. And he's like, did you see the tweet that it was quote tweeting? And she said in May, 2019, I want to attend the Met Gala one day. And she's here. Uh. Now, here's the reason I bring this up is the more women also show their interest beyond sports, whether it's going to the Met Gala and wearing this very like couture outfit, um, doing what, you know, Serena Williams does when she partners with Nike and comes out in these incredible outfits that are also to help with all of the different things that she battles personally as an athlete. Like she has literally designed like compression leggings with Nike to help like herself, but also help others. Like my point here is, is like, yes, you can be really good at your job and also love all these other things. Yes. But the whole thing with Simone is I'm looking at her last night. She's stunning. She's beautiful and everything. And I was thinking a little bit about this last Saturday, I was at Nebraska on the sideline. I had this really like, in my opinion, very cool dress on. It was a billion degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So I'm like a dress I have to, cause I'm going to pot potentially like evaporate into the sun today. So I'm wearing this dress. And this is the thing where I'm like, men just need to allow women to exist in spaces without having to offer additional commentary mm -hmm. because men love to do this thing where they're like, I ha I'm going to say something kind of snarky about what you're wearing or what you're doing or something you're up to, but then I'm going to tell you, but I'm fine with it. Like not a big deal. So like I had this one person who commented on Instagram, who's like, um, a friend of mine said, it looked like you're going to the Kentucky Derby, but I mean, I thought you looked great. It's like, you know what? Just let women exist. You know what? What I'm wearing does not affect you. You don't have to like it. I, I think a lot of people, when they looked at Simone Biles, they were expecting her to show up in a leotard, right. like show right. up in like a thing that she competes in. Mm -hmm. You know what? She is a, she is a damn incredible athlete, but she's a damn incredible woman. She can wear and do whatever she wants. She looked like a vision. Leave women alone. That's like my one little side, like tangent, leave women because alone. <laughs> if I was on the sidelines. I would be wearing exactly what I'm wearing right now. Like, and I would get comments because I wouldn't look professional enough. So like, get out of my yard. 
Like <laughs> leave my lawn and get off of it. It doesn't matter. Am I good at my job? Then shush. I will say I did appreciate the one person who commented on TikTok and was like, oh, this is unacceptable. Not a pair of khaki pants or cargo shorts in sight. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> Beautiful. I was like, because I gave like a week of like what I wore and I was doing it really just for myself. And when he commented that, I'm like, all right, I accept that comment. That is a perfect, like, perfect. (laughs) Now, really quick, before we get out of here for the week, we, like I said, at the beginning of the episode, we bullied you into um, (laughs) uh, emailing us. So I won't read everything, but we did get uh, three that I'll touch on right now. One being from Sky, who we brought up in again, Sky, thank you for being a really, really great listener and friend of our podcast. Um, he said he had meant to send this earlier. So by the way, I don't know how I missed this. He sent the email two hours before we recorded last week. Oh. Somehow it did not show up in our inbox or I did not see it. So he messaged me and was like, I sent you an email. He's right. It's time stamped. Don't know what happened. Anyway. He just shared what an accomplishment. Thanks for being a highlight of his Wednesdays. I honestly don't have a ton of time for podcasts, but I make sure to create time to listen to yours. There are very few podcasts or hell, any form of entertainment that let me learn and hear new perspectives as much as yours does. I think I'm a little bit better of a person for having subscribed, which is a big credit to you both. Sky, I feel the same way about knowing you. Emotional on a Tuesday? Jeez, Sky. (laughs) Thank Um, you. That was very nice. He was right. He uh, emailed us well in advance. So I don't know what happened, Sky, but you're the best. We appreciate you. (laughs) Um, Laura, who we've also heard from before, again, the three that I'm reading, great, like amazing uh, listeners and subscribers and friends. You're all friends. She can't believe it's been a year. Thanks. Thanked us for the podcast. She said, I have learned so much from you both. You inspire me in many ways. I'm ready for a meet and greet anytime. Maybe there's a place with an outdoor patio that will let us hang and drink buckets of coffee. Now, it's not coffee, but I'm sure we could make it happen. But Sky works at Lucky Bucket and they do have a patio. So maybe at some point we just like. This is like the fourth time we brought up Lucky Bucket and their patio and meeting people. So I hope that Sky. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get something. sponsored, Sky. I'm just trying to get this podcast sponsored by Lucky Bucket. <laughs> no big deal. No pressure. But this is like the fourth or fifth time we brought Lucky Bucket up. So the amount of free advertising, Sky. <laughs> <laughs> my my rehearsal dinner is even at Lucky Bucket. Hey. That's how much I love it. I love Lucky Bucket. No, I like legitimately do. Like y'all don't have to pay me. I'm gonna keep paying you. It's fine. <laughs> I will keep coming and providing free advertising because you're great at what you do. Um, the last is from Erica, and I'm gonna forward all of these to Sasha too, so she can. Um, Diet, because this uh, this one is <laughs> Erica's title is okay, okay. I'll email you. <laughs> <laughs> um, she provided us um, an update on her dad. We had mentioned him on a previous episode. He had been going through ke- he's been going through chemo. He's about to do his third round on Friday. He's been recovering well since the last time she'd emailed. Um, I am glad to hear that you know things are going about it. Sounds like as well as they can be. Um, so all the good vibes in the world that that continues. Absolutely. Part of um, that is like, hopefully it seems like, uh, or they were able to, they're hoping to get him to an early marching band practice to watch her daughters because her daughters are in the marching band. I'm excited. I need to now do my due diligence and find them in a game and um, just be like, I know your mom. Yes. <laughs> um, also, she was talking about her daughter who's a senior in high school. They're just trying to make things more normal this year, which is exciting, but is she's really, I love this. She's just really grateful for having time with family and finding positive, joyful moments, even as the pandemic shitty stuff ramps up. I agree with you. It's really exhausting. Um, but the positive, at least in my world is something like this podcast. I, we, we say this a lot. We've kind of evolved. Like the beginning of this podcast, we would kind of give like challenges for the week ahead. It's kind of evolved into us just thanking you for like two minutes at the end of every episode. But I'm I'm really being sincere. It is every single person like Erica and Laura and Sky and the many of you who have emailed us. I'm looking in our um in our thing that's Danny and Amy and Adam and um that's a guy who was not anybody. I just I almost said another name of somebody who was just emailing us to like 
you know, mm. spam. Yeah. Um, but he does email us a lot. Um, <laughs> but my, my point is, is like your names are familiar in many ways. We know you, um, now through Twitter or even maybe personally, but those are those bright spots. And honestly, through when we talk about representation, the fact that like, it doesn't feel like we're having these conversations alone. Every single one of you is right there with us. Like that, that really does mean a great deal. And so we, we thank you a lot, but like, sincerely, like it, yeah we wouldn't be getting as far as we are and keep getting further if it wasn't for everybody who is just trucking along with us. Yeah. A million percent. Um, I think that you said that perfectly. Like I'm like trying to add to it, but I can't because that was perfect. I like, I've just been like sniffling this whole episode. So like everybody like, don't mind me. I'm just, it's a combination of allergies and you guys um, making us emotional and you all making me emotional and like i'm now like thinking again about um just all of the people who make me emotional it's fine it's just that's how this tuesday is gonna go yep <laughs> i'm gonna like show up for Itch. football practice and just be like i'm fine but i'm gonna need all of you to just leave me be for a bit. 100 <laughs> percent. Uh-huh. well yeah. Sasha, I know you have a busy day. I have a busy day. I'm sure all of you listening have busy days. It kind of feels like that's what we are into. To go back to us giving challenges, I'm going to give everyone a challenge. Find 10 minutes today and do, whenever you're listening to this, find 10 minutes and do something for yourself. Yes. I, don't, I don't care if that's scrolling TikTok. I don't care if that's going for a walk. I don't care if that's just sitting in silence for 10 <laughs> minutes. Just find 10 minutes that is something that you just want to do for yourself whatever that is and do it just give yourself that 10 minutes because I feel like I keep hearing people say my life is so busy it keeps getting busier and yep I'm with you so like if you can find that 10 minutes and just do whatever it is yeah stretch yeah (laughs) sit in I like the sit in silence because sometimes that's just what we need but 10 minutes is nothing compared to 24 hours in a day um and doing something for yourself is super important yeah I I I did that I went and rode the bike for 10 minutes I was like I have 10 minutes I can do 10 minutes so I mean just find the thing that like will make you feel a little bit more just at peace because we all need it we all need it deserve it Well, with that, um, right outside of my window, um, somebody is getting ready to mow their lawn. So before all you have to listen to that person, we will wrap another episode of the Mind Your Podcast up. But we will be back next Wednesday. As always, you can email us at mindyourownpodcast at hailvarsity.com. I'm at Erin Sorensen. She's at Sasha72. We love to hear from you. We'll bully you into emailing us next time. But please email us. We love it. We do love an email. We do love a good email. And we we will be back again, like I said, next week. Until then, have a great seven days find 10 minutes we'll talk to you later Bye. a huda media production